everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today is a special video. It is sponsored by Cricut, yay! Um, I'm gonna be showing you all kinds of fun Cricut projects that you can do. Uh, even if you're a beginner, you can do these projects. And it's also a collab with my good friend Jackie, which I'll tell you more about uh, in the video. So let's go ahead and get into the crafts. So I'm starting this project with one of these, it's like a MDF, really big board things. I actually got it at Hobby Lobby on clearance for $1.74, so pretty happy with that. Uh, and I'm gonna take these little poofy sticker things from Dollar Tree and line the whole uh, perimeter of it. And I took two and a half or three coats of that Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color chiffon cream. I love it. Uh, I'm using it a lot in this video, you'll see. <laughs> and this is the Waverly chalk paint in mineral. I'm just going over it, um, kind of trying not to do it too heavy handed. And this is just going to, of course, bring out some of the details of those little puffy stickers. <laughs> And then I'll do it as well throughout the whole piece. I didn't want to just do the little, you know, little dots around the edges. I wanted to do a little bit on the insides too. Not too much. I didn't want to go super crazy with the uh, distressing, you know. Sometimes I do and I say, hmm, I probably could have left that a little less. But on this one, I just really loved the, you know, chiffon cream color. So I didn't want to cover it all up with tons and tons of, you know, distressing. So next we're going to go to design space. I prefer to do everything on my, my iPad. I'm going to go into a shape first, getting myself a square, and we're going to change the dimensions of it to match the item that we're actually putting the decal on. Now I go ahead and I did that. And next on this project, I used something out of design space. I'm just going to go ahead and search for memories and I'm going to find the design that I like. I had already obviously figured out I wanted this one, but it's just uh, memories and meals are made here. I loved it. It's super nice. There's a bunch of different choices in here. You get a lot of variety really, if you have that access. I think it is a monthly fee. So, you know, if it's something uh, you're going to be using a lot of, I definitely would recommend it. So I'm not really going to be cutting that little shape. I'm just cutting the words. I just use the shape kind of as a reference just to make sure it's the right size. And then it's going to give it you the option of putting it on your mat, tells you how big, you know, your stuff you need to cut is. And then it's going to just let you select your material. I am doing vinyl. This is just a permanent black vinyl. I load up my mat with my machine. I like to make sure it loads and it's got a little bit of space. That means that it loaded right. <laughs> and then you hit your little C button to get it started. And here it is all ready for you to weed. Now, when I'm pulling my vinyl off, especially if I have a newer mat, you're kind of just want to do it really slow so that you don't end up pulling it, you know, your design apart. I cut off all the excess that I didn't use. Uh, one time I saw someone, uh, I can't remember who it was, that they were like, they did like a whole sheet of like 12 by 12 and then they just ripped it all apart, you know, ripped it off when they were weeding. And I was like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? <laughs> you can save that. Uh, so we're just weeding through with our little tool, any of the, you know, excess vinyl, essentially. Once I've gotten everything in between all the letters, I am just going to start peeling it back. Now, when you have something like this, that's multiple, um, lines, I like to kind of cut as I go. That way I make sure that I don't end up having my vinyl, you know, come back and actually end up, you know, grabbing other pieces and ripping it up off the transfer and it ends up being a mess. So that's what I like to do is as I go, I will cut it just to make sure that I don't mess it up. Uh, you can probably do, you know, do without that if you're careful. But like I said, I just rather be safe about it. So, and I'll just keep doing that. And obviously there's a couple pieces here and there that I missed. <laughs> it's hard to do sometimes with certain letters, you just end up missing them, but that's okay. You just go back and you take it off. So I'm gonna uh, turn down my light. I had to put it on so I could see everything. So I'm gonna cut off a big piece of transfer tape. I like to use this really big roll of it. 
it ends up just saving money in the long run, in my opinion. So I'm just going to stick it onto my decal, varnish it front and back. That way I make sure that it's gonna pull it up. And now we're going to stick it down um, after you, we figure out kind of the best part uh, place to stick it. So I'm just kind of measuring out like where, and I thought I cut a lot of this out, but I measured out basically where I wanted to put it and decided I, I still didn't know where the heck I was gonna put it at. So uh, break out the other ruler. This is the better choice in my thoughts here. So I'm gonna do from side to side and I'm gonna add just a little dot. You guys know if you've been watching me for a while, finding the middle part, keeping things straight, it's not my strong suit. So I gave myself a little dot gonna kind of just eyeball it after that make sure it seems mostly straight a lot of these decals that are like this kind of are I don't want to say wonky they're not wonky they're beautiful um, but you know there it's not like it's a complete straight line so if you're a little off this kind of helps hide it so make sure that when you're choosing them if that's something you're you know if you have that same problem like I do pick something like this that gives you that you know allowance essentially <laughs> so I'm going pretty slow here this obviously this is sped up quite a lot I didn't want to varnish too too much uh, because I want to make sure I don't pull up a lot of the paint if it pulls up a little bit it's okay I've got so many layers on it it's not a big deal but here it is all finished I think this is probably gonna be a gift for my mom hey everyone I wanted to interrupt just for a minute I hope that you really enjoyed that first DIY it's really cute I love it I love the saying so that's one thing that I absolutely love to do with my Cricut is put words on things because uh, my handwriting is nothing to write home about. <laughs> but <I'll bump. laughs> Sorry. It's really early, so I'm a little I'm a little funny in the morning. I'm gonna walk you through a little bit uh, in a minute about the different things on the Cricut Maker. That is the machine that I am using. I actually purchased the Cricut Maker before I even started my YouTube, so it's got a lot of versatility. Even if you're not a you know a DIYer that makes videos for YouTube, there's lots of things that you can do with it. And now I'm going to tell you a little bit about Jackie's new channel. She so you've seen in the past, I've collabed with a Dollar Tree Mimi's World, i.e. Jackie. Well, she actually uses this channel now primarily for all of her shop with me's and things like that but she has a new channel. She recently started crafting a Mimi's World and this one is just all about crafting, DIYs. Uh, she's gonna have a lot of fun things coming up on this channel. She's got a video for you to check out today. So don't forget to go over there, let her know I sent you. Subscribe, she's just started this channel up. I mean, it's super exciting and also kind of scary, I'm sure. So go give her some love and tell her I sent you. And now we're gonna get back into the DIYs. So I'm starting out with this piece of board. It's already done for me. Um, obviously I've stained it. It is just so you know, 35 by 11 and a half. I got it from Hobby Lobby and I sanded it down cause it was really rough. And obviously you can probably make one of these yourselves, um, but I wasn't feeling particularly, um, you know, handy to put this together myself so i went ahead and just bought it ready made um if you keep an eye out you can get them when they're on 40 percent off so you can get them at a re somewhat reasonable price uh, obviously it's going to cost you a lot less if you just make it yourself uh, but first what i'm doing is i'm adding on uh, since i stained it in a dark walnut i am going to go ahead and give it a full you know obviously overly done <laughs> distressing with that chalk paint in the color plaster and now i'm going to sand it down quite a lot i'm using my finger sander and i wanted to kind of mute some of that white obviously you got a lot of it going on here uh i just thought that you know it looked cool but i wanted to dull it down make it look more rustic i mean it's pretty rustic but we're going to make it look even more rustic so now I'm going to take you through the design space app again, and this time I'm actually going to be making the wording myself. Uh, I obviously already set up my box the way I wanted to have like the words, obviously not the whole thing because that would be really long, but I'm choosing the font called Merlot. It is also in the Cricut design space. If you have the access level account, you'll have that. You won't have to pay for it. And what I do is uh, since I set it all up, I like to change up. Oh, I lied. It's not actually using Merlot. I decided I liked this one better. It's Magnolia Sky. I got it off of Defont. So that's another thing we'll cover in a later video is how to bring all that over. Now, what I like to do though, I like to change the spacing because I'm never typically happy with the way the spacing is. So what I'll do is I'm going to 
change my spacing down to zero. Then you're going to go under actions, and then advanced, and then ungroup letters. And that's going to let you actually move the letters around. And I like to put them to where they're pretty much right on top of each other, like touching. Because once you do that, and you're all, you know, you're happy with it, you can go ahead and weld it. Once you have it welded, it's going to cut it off as all as one piece. That way, your letters aren't looking funky. Um, if you don't do that, and I've done it plenty of times, you end up with cuts in your other letters if they're touching. So word to the wise, make sure you weld your stuff. <laughs> so once that's all done, I'm going to just go ahead and use my little box that I've already kind of laid out so I can get an idea of how big I want my font. So like I said, you've got a lot of versatility using the design space. Make your own stuff, use the stuff they already made, you know, just about anything. You can dream up, you can do it. I think that used to be a slogan somewhere. <laughs> so I cut it out on some stencil vinyl and now what we're doing is basically we're doing weeding but we're doing it the opposite way we did on the first project. This time you're going to keep all of the excess and you're just going to cut out, sorry for the headshot there, <laughs> you're just going to cut out the uh, the wording, the lettering, the part that you're going to paint basically. That's what I like to use this for obviously is for painting and like I said, sorry about all those headshots. Um, <laughs> and you're going to just trim out all of the words that you're going to paint. And then we're going to put it down on our board. I've already found the center part and I still had to use my transfer tape to help. If you had a something you cut out on those on that vinyl that didn't have any little like little parts inside of letters, you could obviously get away without doing it. I've done that before with larger things that didn't have those little bits of letters, like the inside of an E or the inside of like the B on this font. So you've got a couple of different things. If you don't need to use it, then you don't have to. So you're just going to take it all off of there. I've already varnished it on, you know, the transfer tape, and now we're going to place it on our board. And now we're going to varnish it down just to try and keep it to where it's not going to have a ton of bleeding. It does have some, like I said, this wood, this boards, it's, it's very, very rough. Um, I sanded a lot of it, but it's still pretty rough. So you're going to have some bleeds. And you know what? I wasn't really too worried about it because it is very rustic. And obviously there is a lot of white um, distressing on it already. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not too terribly worried about it. So once you've gotten it laid down, you're going to rub all around where you don't want to get any paint, you know, try to keep it to where it stays within, you know, the area it's supposed to. I do lay some painter's tape down, as you see, just to keep me from going too crazy on the part on top. So once you're happy with how it is, we're going to start with the paint. This is the same chalk paint, um, Waverly plaster, and I've got a little makeup sponge and I'm just dabbing straight up and down as best you can just to cover, you know, where your openings are in the vinyl. Just keep basically doing that until you've got it completely covered. I only did one coat. I went back a little bit, you know, like right here, I started in the middle and I did all of my letters. Then I went back and tried to see if there was any areas that needed some more. So now that that is finished, we're just going to peel back all of that vinyl to show off all of the, you know, part that we painted. <laughs> like I said, it is going to have a little bit of bleeding. I'm not terribly worried about it. And it just kind of depends on what you're doing. Obviously, the smoother projects that you have, you have less problems with that. Uh, and I've had some people, I've seen some people use regular permanent vinyl to do it as well. So it just kind of depends on what your projects you're doing, what you're comfortable using and you know, whatnot, those kind of things. So we're going to pull up all of the other little pieces, you know, the inside pieces of our decal so we can, you know, get the full view of the word. So now that our painting part is done, we are going to add some twine. I'm going to flip this guy around. It's going to be kind of a weird angle. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know a better way to do it. And I'm going to just glue down, I think, four pieces of twine. I am going to do, you know, pretty long pieces just because it is going to go the whole length of this sign. And what it's going to actually end up being is little spots to put some clothespins to hang pictures from. 
So I've got them all glued down and now I'm going to determine kind of where I want them on the other side of the board and I'm going to pin them, well not pin them down, but you know, hold them down with these little clamps from Dollar Tree. They're pretty handy to have. If you don't have them, I definitely recommend getting some. You want to make sure that you pull it pretty, uh, pretty tight that way because you're going to lose a little bit of, you're going to get a little more slack when you actually glue it. So try to keep it as tight as you can. And once we have gotten all of those pinned down, then we'll be able to flip it around and actually glue them, which I'm not going to show you because it's the exact same way it was the first time. <laughs> Here it is all finished though. It's got the little pins in there. It's going to be super, super cute. Hey, I'm going to pop in here one more time. I hope everyone is enjoying the crafts today and that you're definitely going to go check out Jackie's new channel. And I'm going to walk you through just a few things about the Cricut Maker, which is the machine that I've been using today. So here's the Cricut Maker off of Cricut's website. You can buy it in a variety of places, um, but this is where I ended up getting mine. They had a pretty good deal when I bought it several months ago. But you can use all kinds of different materials from paper, vinyl, leather, wood. Uh, it actually has a knife blade that I'm going to be checking out soon. I bought it. I haven't uh, delved into it too much yet. I really want to get into those foil transfers too. They look absolutely gorgeous. Um, and you can even draw with it, which is actually the project we're about to do here in a minute, because again, my handwriting's not very good. So I really prefer to use it when I'm trying to do something, you know, more impressive. So let's get into it. We're going to start same place like normal, start off on the design space, and I'm going to pull up some tags. So I'm going to write kind of like a little recipe for some uh, salt scrub. So I get my tag and I've already got my font, um, my little description of it ready to go. Now I want the description of the salt scrub to be written on my tag. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change it to draw it. To do that, you're going to just go into edit and then line type, you're going to change it from where it says cut to draw. And then you're going to pick out whatever kind of writing utensil that you have. I have these gel pens uh, and it tells you on there the size of it. And you just kind of find the one that matches it and like that. See, I just selected that one. The color doesn't really matter unless you want to know what it's going to look like. So now we're just going to place that on our tag and we're going to make sure you load your pin into your Cricut because obviously if it's not in there, it's not going to draw anything. <laughs> so then once we're done, we'll have our sheet. I ended up wanting three of them and I'm just going to peel those off of my mat. And I just did a white paper with blue writing. I thought it was kind of pretty. And same thing, you're just gonna peel it up. Try to peel it kind of like without pulling it so it doesn't end up being all curved. So once that is set, we're going to go ahead and add it to our jar. Actually, I think first we're gonna add the decal. I already made that, you know how to make it pretty much. I used my own font that I picked and I'll have that listed for you below. And we're going to put it down, and of course I messed it up, <laughs> but that's all right. If you mess things up, um, just one thing to note as well, if you're gonna use something on glass, make sure you clean it with rubbing alcohol first so that it has a good ability to stick. So if you mess up, you just basically peel it off a little bit, especially if it's smaller stuff. The smaller writing is a little bit harder to deal with, but we're just gonna press it down, and then you're gonna do the same way we've been doing with all of our decals, pull back your transfer tape, and it'll have a nice little, you know, decal on there for you, I guess. <laughs> um, the rounded stuff is, again, it's a little bit more tricky, so it just kind of depends on what you're most comfortable with. Just, you know, varnish it on your surface, and same way. I like to use sometimes my little tools just to hold it down um, to keep it from, you know, moving around. Once that's all set, I'm going to just take some of my linen uh, twine from Dollar Tree, wrap it around a few times, and we're gonna just attach our tag, just because I like to add a little bit of like a recipe if I'm gonna do something like this. That way, if anybody, you know, wanted to remake it, they could, they could make it pretty easily. Add my little bow, and of course I did this, and I was like, oh wait a minute, it helps if you put the tag on. <laughs> but you know how it goes. So we'll add our tag this time. And now we'll tie it in a nice little bow. And what I end up doing though, I end up cutting off the little tails and just kind of gluing down, um, you know, the little excess of tail. Just depends on what you want. I didn't really want the tails on there. So see, I'm gonna cut that down and I'll glue it on uh, off screen. You know how to glue things down by this point, I'm sure. <laughs> so now it is all finished. Uh, this is actually gonna be a gift for my daughter's teachers. I wanna thank everyone, especially 
for watching and I want to thank Cricut for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to go check out Jackie's new channel. Go over there and subscribe. Check out her video that she's got for you today as well. I will see you guys next time.